and let him live the rest of his life in anim an animimity. <laughs> How do you say this? You know me, I love betta fish. The whole reason why I got into the fish keeping hobby was because my friend gave my toddler son a betta fish and I've had one ever since. But what do you do if your betta hates you? Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, and this is Sonic, my mustard gas betta fish that I originally got for my 20 gallon community tank until he started trying to attack all of his tank mates and ended up ripping his fins, which earned him this five gallon bachelor pad. Then I proceeded to accidentally poison the whole tank. <laughs> so if you wanna see the whole saga, you can start with episode one over here. Now, the last time I made a dedicated video about him was actually six months ago. And you know why? Because he hates being on camera. I am totally serious. Like if I come up to the tank, he will swim up to the front, do a little friendly gill flare, try to beg for food. But if I approach with a camera or a smartphone and try to take his picture, heaven forbid, try to film him, he immediately disappears like Houdini. Now, Sonic was supposed to be the very visible mascot of this channel. I actually had a profile picture made that is of him, but he was just unhappy being the pet of a YouTuber. So my choices were either take him out of the limelight, let him live out the rest of his life in anonymity, or rehome him. Of course, I never seriously considered option number two because what am I gonna do? Give him away to some random stranger on Craigslist? No. But then enter in my childhood best friend, Zelda. So back when I started my YouTube channel, she dutifully, out of loyalty, subscribed to my channel, even though she didn't have any fish. But I didn't realize that three years later, she was still actually watching my YouTube channel and now wanted her own betta fish. Hmm. So she knew about my troubles with Sonic and actually kindly offered to take him home. Now, I really debated whether or not this was the right decision because, you know, Sonic is a wet pet. He is not some random neon tetra that doesn't have a name. Um, but in the end, I felt like that he would be happier with her and her family and they too would get more enjoyment out of him. The only trouble was I live in Colorado and she's all the way in the Northeast. So I have seen several YouTube videos of fish tubers traveling on airplanes with live fish in their carry-on baggage. I went to the TSA website. It says, yes, live fish are okay in carry-on, but then there's like a little bit of fine print on the bottom that says, oh yeah, by the way, the TSA officer gets the final say. They can do whatever they want. So on the day of the flight, I had totally like butterflies, knots in my stomach. I was just really nervous. And plus I was running late because I had to catch Sonic at 6.30 a.m. in the morning, double bag him in two really strong fish bags, tied him with rubber bands, tape them for extra measure, and then I put him on the top of my backpack so he wouldn't get smushed by everything, anything, and then that way it'd be really easy to remove him when I got to security. And thankfully, the TSA officer that I got um, in security was absolutely thrilled to see a little fish traveling down the conveyor belt um, through the x-ray machine. So whew, when I finally made it through security, I was able to breathe a huge sigh of relief and my heart rate could finally start going back down to normal. Once I made it all the way to the gate, I texted Zelda and I said, we are good to go. Uh, she had already purchased like half of the supplies. I sent her a shopping list, which I will link down in the description for you as well. But I said, okay, take your five gallon tank, which she had already done a leak test on, and we're going to add the gravel, put the decorations in, add the heater and the dechlorinated water. And that way, by the time Sonic gets there, he will have a nice warm and toasty, you know, home waiting for him. When I landed and turned off airplane mode on my phone, I saw two text messages from her. And the first one said, oh no, the water is completely cloudy even though I rinsed the gravel like 20 times. And then the second one said, the heater doesn't fit. It's too tall for the aquarium. And so I was like, it's okay. I 
believe that once we in, I install the filter for you, the cloudiness will just naturally go away. And then the heater, you can actually lay down horizontally. Um, I would put it maybe near the back of the aquarium and that way your decorations will hide it. So no worries. <laughs> Sonic. As soon as we got home, I went ahead and took Sonic out, floated him in the aquarium water so that he could start warming up a little bit. And then I went ahead and tested her tank water just to make sure all the water parameters were okay. Because I've heard that some people's like tap water sometimes has traces of nitrite or nitrate in it. Then I installed the cycled sponge filter that I had been running in my 20 gallon aquarium for like months. Um, if you are new to fish, want to set up your first tank and you hopefully have a friend with aquariums, definitely try this trick because you want to bring over as much beneficial bacteria into your brand new aquarium uh, as much as possible because those amazing microbes are going to help purify your water once your fish starts pooping in the tank. I got her this green USB nano air pump that is nearly silent. And then of course, gotta install a check valve for her in the airline tubing so that her kitchen counters won't flood if there is ever a power outage. Gonna stick on a little thermometer on the side just to make sure the water is always a nice 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And there we go. Everything is ready for Sonic. Within the hour, the water did clear up as I predicted and Sonic was getting used to his new home. I had sent Zelda to PetSmart to get some decorations because I feel like their fake plants look a little bit more natural. And I think she did a really good job of picking ornaments and decorations that were of different heights, colors, and textures. It makes it like really interesting. And of course, all of them are soft enough that they won't damage Sonic's fins. Because we're not gonna start off with live plants at first, we took a cutting from one of Zelda's many house plants. This one happens to be Pothos, which is really hardy, does well even in low lighting. And you just stick the stem in the water and then it'll start producing roots. Then those roots will start absorbing the toxic nitrogen waste that comes from Sonic's poop. Sonic needed a little time to get used to everything, so Zelda and I actually left on a little mini vacay for a day or two. And then when we got back, I decided to show her the ropes of how to take care of him. So Zelda, this section is for you. For now, we are going to feed him extreme floating betta pellets, which comes with a nice little serving spoon. And we're gonna start off with about seven to eight pellets. And then I taught Zelda how to kind of watch his weight, his body shape, and then she can change the portion control based on if he's too skinny or getting too obese. Eventually, we will introduce more variety into his diet, which I covered previously in this video. I brought her some water test strips, as you saw previously, so she knows when to do a water change. And because we're in the kitchen, we can just kind of push the tank over and then use an aquarium siphon to vacuum the gravel directly into the sink. So no need for buckets. Zelda is actually a pro at using aquarium siphons already because she did the miraculous task of choosing to birth her children at home. And she actually used a giant python siphon to um, drain out the inflatable birthing pool. But if you need a refresher on how to use one, I've got a video over here that you can check out. Final reminder, Zelda, is set a reminder in your phone to clean that filter every one to two months. It is not, filters are not some kind of magical black hole where fish poop goes to disappear. They are more like a litter box where you do have to clean them and empty them out of waste so that they don't become clogged up. A week later, I got an update from her telling me that the squares on her test strip were white, meaning she has zero ppm nitrite and nitrate, so there's no need to do a water change. And also, Sonic is starting, well, the betta fish formerly known as Sonic, now known as Gil, is coming out a lot more and is happily swimming around in his new home. As hard as this decision was to rehome Gil, I'm uh, so glad to hear that he is doing better with his new family. And to be honest, you know, I only have three tanks, so not being able to share one of them with you was also kind of tough. But now that he is gone, I have actually been able to add a couple of algae eaters to this tank because as you can see, it ain't looking so good. So if you have any recommendations for peaceful nano fish that can go with some little nerite snails, let me know down in the comments. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video. Anonymity.
anonymity.